97 of the fifth season of the Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League. Ang Liga ng Bawat Pilipino. And for only the second time this season, we are broadcasting to you live from the Laguna Sports Complex in Santa Cruz, Laguna, the home of your Laguna Cra Asia heroes. They will be facing the Iloilo United Royals later on at 8 o'clock p.m. But for now, Enzo Serrano and the rest of the Pampanga Giant Lanterns will be looking to get their second straight victory after getting their first loss of the season against the Batanga City Embassy Chill against Jan Nermal and the rest of the Bacoor City Strikers. These two players were the top performers for the squad in their last outings. The best of the North versus the best of the South. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Palanya, joined by Coach Mike Perez. Now, Coach, for this top of our coverage, I'd like to highlight, no? Your front line na parehong kupunan, your comments on the front line of these two teams. Well, contrasting picks here for both teams. You've got Marquis Nermal playing alongside uh, the other bigs para dito sa, sa team ng Bacoor, samantalang on the other end. The offensive power of the bigs of Baltasar and Luis Angalang is going to be put to the test against that defense by Bacoor. Uh, definitely, it's going to be a very interesting matchup, especially in that front court for these two teams. We have the third member of our broadcast panel. It's Miss Sheila Salaisa. We will be hearing from her in just a bit. Papapanood niyo ang Liga ng Bawad Pilipino on MPTV Channel 98 on Signal as well as on our Facebook and YouTube channels. Now, let's talk about the previous games of both squads. Unahin na natin dyan ang last game ng Pampanga Giant Lanterns. Now, it was against the Iloilo United Royals and they had the misfortune uh, being the first team that they faced after getting their first loss of the season after that long unbeaten run that was against the Batanga City Embassy Chill here against the Iloilo United Royals they made sure that umpisa pa lang nagdominate na sila eh, tama ka doon they actually Pampanga put all their frustration on Iloilo after that game a close out loss uh, closing out that loss to Batangas they immediately went on a 15 to 2 run matter of fact after two all it was all really Pampanga from there on Enzo, uh, Enzo Serrano led Pampanga with 23 points along with Baltasar and Archie Concepcion contributing as well. But when you look at the numbers here, I want to start off with the rebounds. There were actually plus 13 on the rebounds which led to 9 fast break points uh, which, which led to a plus 9 on fast break points which led also to a plus 16 in points in the paints. Ergo, they got better conversions. 47% versus that of 34 only para dito sa Iloilo. Well, Papanga is the best rebounding team here in the league and they certainly show that among all other aspects in that game against the United Royals. Ngayon tawid naman tayo sa kabilang panig. Let's talk about the last game of the Bacor City Strikers. This was against the defending champions, the Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguards. That happened in Palayan City, the home floor of the defending champs, the Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguards. They actually kept toe-to-toe -to -toe mm -hmm. with Nueva Ecija for the first three quarters, but that fourth quarter was just a different story, and that spelled the game for the four City Strikers. And add to that, that fourth quarter, it actually that game actually ended the shooting slump of uh, Villarreal, shooting much so much better. That game was without Ludovice, who had an MCL uh, injury that, that, that game, and also Heruta, who wasn't there also, so no point guards. Uh, Liu Yu was the one who stepped out being the, the point guard during that game. Now, when you look at the stats, they were actually a plus 12 in terms of attempts, but a minus 10% when it comes to mix. They were a minus 12 on rebounds, though offensively, medyo advantage sila on a plus 3. Free throws was horrible, 84 versus 58%, but the forced turnover was really did them well for that game as they forced Nueva Ecija to 18 turnovers, which they converted to 21 points. Adyan talaga natin nakita yung trademark defense, that suffocating pressure D in the second half that really spelled the difference for the Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguard in that game. Plus the hot shooting, uh, the rediscovered hot shooting oh, yeah. uh, by Ron Villarias. Now let's talk about the important numbers between these two teams. On your screens right there, Coach, highlight to us kung ano yung uh, kailangan natin pag-usapan sa laro na to between these two squads. I want everyone to focus on the first two rows. Points scored and points allowed. This is the top offensive team in Pampanga and the top defensive team in Bacoor, allowing only 67 points for Bacoor and Pampanga, scoring at will almost 93% per game. Rebounds, Bacoor is a minus 9. Um, assists, it's advantage to Pampanga, 26 point time, being able to share that rock even better. But the bench points really much more depth on the side of Pampanga as they are a plus 8 in that category. Well, these numbers explaining to us why both of these teams 
are top in their respective divisions. Now, let's talk about the player matchup that we have featured for this game. It's going to be two former college studs. One is James Quecote, one is Enzo Serrano. Of course, Enzo Serrano already having PBA experience. And James Quecote, this is his first foray into professional basketball, this is MBBL. Well, two different guards, but same same power for both. No, More points for Serrano. Field goes so much better, but I feel he got more touches compared to Quecote. But rebounds and steals really more advantage over to Quecote. So it really now matters if you have that strong offensive player in Serrano, how are you going to guard him? And that's where Quecote's advantage on defense could come into play. Well, let's see what these two players have to say about each other. We're going to hear about that from Sheila Salaysay. She is side by side at courtside with these two players. Yes, I have with me James Gacote, of course, and Encho Serrano, but let me ask first, James. James, uh, let's backtrack a little bit. Facing difficult teams, we have Nueva, Pasig, and Jensen. You were being limited. You were limited with your numbers, 4, 8, and 9 points, respectively. But tonight, you're going up against the number one team. How will you make sure that you will be unstoppable? Well, <clears throat> well I'm just going to let the game come to me, and we'll go from there. And nothing, nothing too much. Just let the game come to me at all. I will look forward to that. Thank you and good luck. Puta naman ako sa'yo, Encho. Encho, mat mas mataas ang points and assist percentage mo. You're shooting better from the field. Ngayon, paano mo sisiguraduhin na magiging number one pa rin kayo sa North? Um, siguro, gawin lang namin yung tinuturo sa amin ng mga coaches namin. And siguro, may extra ano kami ngayon na uh, pag-uugutan kami kasi lahat, ng, alos, lahat yata dito kapampangan. So, yun. Bibigay namin yung best namin. That will definitely be a boost pa sa inyong team ngayon. Let's get the ball rolling. So let me now turn you over to Ken Pangilinan, our venue announcer. Mga Kaliga, are you ready? The action continues at the Laguna Sports Complex in Santa Cruz for the 2023 OK Bet. Manny Pacquiao's MBBL Season 5 presented by Extreme. It's our second game as Pampanga takes on Bagoor City. Live on the official MPBL Facebook page, YouTube channel, and MPTV Signal Channel 98. Let's beat these starters. Make some noise for your Pampanga Giant Lanterns AMG Free Construction. Starting at small forward number two, Archie Concepcion. Power forward number seven, JB Pajio. Center number 19, Justin Balthazar. Point guard number 11, MJ Garcia. And at shooting guard number 18, Encho Serrano. The head coach of Pampanga is the Honorable Governor Dennis Delta Pineda. Assistant coaches Pedic Di Matula. Assistant team managers Ronald Dulod and Raymond Guevara. Team manager and co-team owner is Mr. Aurelio A.G. Gonzalez III. And now, let's meet these starting lineups for your Bagoor City Strikers, PhilBev.com. Starting at small forward, number 29, John Nermal. Power forward, number 3, Mike Cagnete. Center, number 8, Jamo Egilos. Point guard, number 20, Joel Lee Yu. And at shooting guard, number 15, James Guacute. The head coach of Bacor City is Alex Angeles. Assisted by R.B. Mangahas, Marlo Corpin, Jake Guadamore, the skyscraper, Mardo Aquino, Royce Cuevas, and Big Mac Andaya. Coaching consultants is Cap P.J. Aganos, Chris your primary protagonists for this ball game, Pampanga will be starting with MJ Garcia and Enzo Serrano in the backcourt. Malti Baltazar, JB Bajio once again getting the starting nod para kay Governor Dennis Delta Pineda along with Archie Concepcion. Sa kabila naman, the Bacor City Strikers are beginning this game with Joel Liu, James Cuecote, Jamo Egilos, Mike Cañete, and John Nermal. Well, interestingly, uh, you know, uh, Mark, he is not on the starting lineup here considering the pressure on this game. And its implications could be he's coming off the bench to observe what's going to happen first before they get him in. Pampanga wins the opening tip. JB Bayo 
the defended by Mike Cañete. Right away, Bajio, aggressive drive to the basket for the first two points of this game. Well, if you remember that team matchup, we got number one offensive team versus number one defensive team. That immediately was put to the test. Just so much opportunities for Pampanga to score and a lot of opportunities as well for Bacaor to get those stops. Bahia had six points in their last outing against the Iloilo United Royals. They force a stop here. Garcia has been a fixture at that starting point guard spot for Pampanga this whole season. That all started during the second half of last year's campaign. Uh, that outside shot has yet to be polished by KMJ Garcia. Liu, with the absence of Ivan Ludovice and Aaron Heruta in their past game, has been forced to play extended minutes at the point guard spot. Egilos, one hander doesn't go. And I like that you brought that up, Javi, because you know, if you talk about point guards here, you're actually talking of Enches Rana, even playing point guard at, at some point in the game. So Liu is gonna be vital in this game for Bakoor. But the difference, coach, between Encho and Joel Liu is that Encho has actually played point guard right. a lot of his career. Correct. Liu has never been tasked to play the primary point guard right. for most of the teams that he's played in. Yeah, matter of fact, he was actually forced into this because of the injuries to Ludovice and Eruta. Well, he has had to learn how to be that number one guard for them on the fly. Garcia, that's a tough shot, kisses it off the glass. MJ Garcia for the two points. I like how uh, Egulus was actually dropped covering, covering rather, that attempt towards the paint. But it's really just more firepower offensively para sa Pampanga to able to make that shot. Bacor has had three empty possessions so far to begin. Exactly two minutes gone by here in this game. Balti missing on the shot. And so, Liu. Yeah, and so it looks like the ploy is going to be every time Balti gets that ball on the post, they're going to double him. Miss from the outside by Cañete. Bahio loses it. Garcia recovers. MJ stretch. That's going to be a foul on Joel Christian Liu. And Joel Liu again, we talked about him having been forced into this situation of playing point guard for Bacoor. And he too's got to make a stop every time on those fast breaks para dito sa Pampanga because every time that they control the board, they always look to push that ball on the other end. And that's just how great the makeup of this roster is for the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. Right. You have a guy in Balti Baltazar, also able front court members like JB Bahio. And later on off the bench, we're going to see Matt De Leon who can rebound the ball for them, secure the defensive possession, and then get it to guys out in the open floor who are great finishers on the break like Enzo Serrano and Archie Concepcion. Exactly. I mean, if you want to start a, um, a fast break, it starts with defensive rebound. And when you throw it to the other side, you have to have makers on that open floor. And Pampanga definitely has makers on open floor. Uh, Bacor City has yet to make a basket here. Liu, could this be the first one? That's still a miss. Serrano. That's a block rejected by John Nermal. Cuecote. Liu is ahead of the pack. Ooh. Basket and one. What a way to get your first basket of the game for the Bacor City Strikers. How about that forceful play there by Liu? Able to run out in the offense, in the open floor, unafraid of the defense that's put up, but it really started with that block on the other end and then opening it up for this clear layup shot and an end one for Li Yu. Li Yu at the line for the bonus, he sinks it. Averaging only close to four points per game this season and 2.3 assists, but we all know if you've been watching Joel Liu throughout his basketball career, his contributions go beyond the box scores. So far, the big men of uh, Bacor doing a good job challenging those paint incursions. How about this one? Uh, talking about paint incursion, well, Jemo Egilos didn't have 
to go inside and drive because he was all alone for those two points. For a point right there, he was the one who defended on that end. He was on the finish also on the other. Well, his return has really made a big boost para dito sa front court ng Bacor City Strikers. And that's not to say that they were already a deep front court team mm -hmm. before his return. Uh, it just really gives more stability. It definitely the experience of JMO Egelos playing in this league will be a big boost to them as they go deep into the playoffs. But here, Balti Baltazar imposing his will on that play after two bots possessions. Yeah, and you know, being the number one offensive team, every point of attack is going to get pressured by that defense. So you put a second guy in there, you got to be wary of where that other cutter is going to be. In that case, Balti dove, he got it and won. 8-5, to five. Pampanga in the lead by 3. Still pressure defense in the backcourt, but Bacor City able to get it across. Liu against another lefty in MJ Garcia. Egilos fakes out Baltazar. Balti remains on the ground. Cuecote couldn't get that one to fall. Well, Cuecote's got to find this rhythm, though. He's one of those guys that Bacor is really looking to from a production stand standpoint. And they got to hold the ground without Marquis on the floor. Only 2 out of 13 against Nueva Ecija. It was si James Cuecote. Good defense by J. Moegulos yeah. forcing that miss on Baltazar. I was going to say the same, Javi. It's, you know, pretty good defense here by Aguilus. And look at him running that seal. Beautiful feed and open floor. It almost a slam for the big man. Fast break ran to perfection by the strikers. Now just a one-point ball game. Eight to seven. Serrano will try from the outside. That's too strong. John Nermal with a rebound. And with Egulus and Nermal running the full length of the floor on every open opportunity, that's going to put a lot of uh, pressure as well for Balti to come down and defend. And here, going downhill, James Cuecote attracting in the defense, drawing in the shot blocking Balti Baltazar to get it down low to Michael Cañete. Now look at Cuecote rejecting that screen. Snake dribble, Balti on him, had to give it up underneath. Now, do you agree, Coach, that sometimes it's actually even better for the offensive team when you reject the ball screen? You're right. I agree. Because rejected ball screens are more difficult to, uh, to defend against, and teams are mostly not ready on a rejected ball screen. 9 to 8. Labang na dito ang Bakor. Concepcion. Free for 3. Thought it was short. He was going for the offensive rebound, but he swishes it through. That's the third magic man for that trio of Encho, Balti, and this guy, Archie Concepcion. He just provides so much lift to these top two guys of Pampanga. And that's a lot to say about Archie Concepcion being left in that triumvirate that they now boast of because last year, he was the head of that snake right. together with... Jason Apolonio and Mitchell Minus as Baltazar scores 13 to 9, four point lead for the Giant Lanterns. And Pampanga just keeps going to Baltazar, testing that defense for how long can Bacoor hold that type of defense against the big man Balti. Nermal forced into a dribble situation while Concepcion Camiete leaves it. For Egilos, that's going to be a shot clock violation for the strikers. And now it's time for Coach Alex Angeles to get Marky off that Bacor bench. He will come in alongside Jammer Hamito and Zimboy Pastoran. How about that ball movement though on those two replays by uh, Pampanga? First off, that three by Archie Concepcion. On that pin down, pin away, you can't get up, caught up in that screen. You have to go over that screen because Archie's got that shot from the outside. Garcia, zero out of two from three point country to start. Astaran has that tapped out of bounds. It's going to stay with the strikers. 
Bacor actually giving a good account of themselves. I mean, you went up against Nuevo Ecija, played a close game. Now it's, what, the first quarter with, with six minutes already gone, and you're still playing good. Now let's turn you over to Ms. Sheila Salaysay. Nasa Nueva Ecija ang Buenas. Ito ang nasabi ni Coach Alex Angeles with that defeat. Para sa larong ito, nothing to, to lose daw sila dahil wala sa kanilang pressure. Dagdag ni Coach RB Mangahas. Both coaches hoping that this opportunity going against the top team in the North won't slip from their hands. Admittedly, they missed the point guard position without having Ludovice and Heruta in their previous game. But the good news is Heruta is back sa larong ito. Ano nga ba ang advantage ng Pampanga? Meron daw silang Balti. They firmly instructed they're meant to be more physical against Balti. Do their job para malimitahan ito. Have in Coach Mike? Thank you so much, Sheila. What do you make of that remark by Coach Alex Angeles? Nasa, nasa Nueva Ecija nga ba yung Buenas noong araw na yun? Well, I think this is just mind games. <laughs> 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 I could be just mind games trying to set up. But, you know, to, to his point, that actually was a good three quarters. It, it really just was a matter of Villarillas coming out of that slump. Well, he started out early in that game, and when he gets that first shot, really oh, yeah. hard to stop a scorer and a shooter like Byron Villarillas. And, of course, that point guard spot definitely highlighted by the turnovers that they committed in the third and fourth periods were definitely an absence that they sorely missed. At buti na lang, sabi nga ni Sheila, oh. Aaron Heruta is back into the fold para right. sa Manila to extend their rotation at that one spot, the three guys. Right. And that relieves uh, much pressure on the shoulders of uh, Lee Yu. At the Leon, one of the leading shot blockers in the game. Working against Mark Yee. Offensive rebound, he gives it to JLC John Lloyd Clemente who scores his first basket of the game. Uh, very rarely do you see those bigs, uh, De Leon and Apollonio, going off ac aggressive offensively. Once they saw Mark Yee, they're gonna attack that defense of Mark. Veloria gets it to Yee. Mark, the pass, Hamito. In and out on the push shot. Binuya. Nobody stopping the basketball. He'll go all the way for two points. Stopping a basketball out in the open, downhill. Sometimes easier said than done. If you got a really good guy that's got good handles and that much force coming in, you're going to end up with a foul if you stop him. There you see Raymond Binuya. Uh, aside from the things that Coach Mike mentioned, it's also the experience that he brings. Imagine from being a guy who has rode that Pampanga bench to now the most veteran team on that roster. The Giant Lanterns are up by 7, 17 to 10, exactly two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Your next three games on the schedule of the Bacoor City Strikers. It's Bicol, Bacolod, and the Batanga City Embassy Chill at the Strike Gymnasium on August 12th. Yeah, and those are key games, lalo na yung last one na yan, yung uh, Batangas Embassy Chill. And if my, my record serves me right, Bacoor also is going to go up with uh, Zamboanga as their final game in this pool play. And so you don't want to get into uh, Zamboanga with you know, having implications. Again, whether you're at the top, the mid, or the bottom, it's win all games necessary for all the teams. And also, to kind of modify that statement that you just said, whether you're at the top, the middle, or the bottom, you can't really say, kumananalo kayo. Correct. <laughs> there have been a lot of upsets that right. has happened here this season, and that has made this year's MPBL just two levels, three levels, or maybe even five levels more exciting. Right. And so, kahit na nasa taas ka na, you can't relax, no? You might have 18 wins, but if you string a s losses, close ones, on your final 10, that's still gonna spell you out. A shot on the other side by Cranial Veloria. He loves those mid-range jumpers. Yeah. And they're, they're going to need Cranial to make those shots from the outside. I mean, you, you can't be holding on to uh, a marquee and Cuecote for those points. Somebody's got to come up. Bench points going to be crucial for Bacor in this game. Tap ends up with Roland Santos. Apolonio. 
Tries to go inside, leans in for the scoop. He will be fouled. Two shots coming up para dito kay Jason Apolonio. Well, he just loved the activity offensively of itong uh, Pampanga. Just a lot of man movement, a lot of ball movement. And the thing is, they're very disciplined when it comes to, you know, their, their co concepts offensively. And that was one of the prime reasons why they were able to get the longest winning streak before being beat by Batanga City Embassy Chill a couple of games back. Yeah, and you know, credit to uh, Coach Cholo Villanueva for coming up with a really good uh, game plan. But, you know, those threes really were the ones that did them a lot of favor in that game. Camito over two Pampanga Giant Lanterns. They force a miss. Apolonio challenging the defense of Marquis. There really seems to be a conscious effort to right. attack the defense of Marquis. Correct. So every time your defender is Marquis, forget the place. You got to attack it. Oh, what a move! And yet again, they go at him. Really good thing you pointed that out, coach. And it always seems to me, I think we've seen three, four times already, every time you get off that initial action, you know that last defender is going to be marquee and you got to attack that. And boy, are these guys ready for contact inside. How about that little in and out before going on that runner going glass? Ginawa niyang cones yung defenders ng strikers dun sa play na yun. Ito si Raymond Binuya. And na nag nagpahirap dun, Javi, dun sa set na yun. At least defensively, that corner was empty. So he had the entire floor, that side, to himself. Binuya completes the three-point play. This is now the biggest lead of the game for the Giant Lanterns, 22-12. to 12. And they're 40 seconds to play here in the opening period. Jimboy Pastoran, that's off to the right. Binuya pushing, attacking. De Leon on oh, the wow. follow. You missed, don't worry, buddy, I got you. Uh, that's why these guards of Pampanga are just really confident to throw up shots close, long, doesn't matter what range. Yi. To try and beat the buzzer that wasn't gonna count even if it went in and that's it for the first quarter here between the Bacor City Strikers and the Papanga Giant Lanterns and JB Bayo is starting this game a second straight start para sa kanya helping his team set the tone and James Quekote also trying his best to try and get Bacor into this one they actually were able to tie the game and make it close for a certain stretch, but the Giant Lanterns just really too long and too strong. Exactly, and you know, you gotta come back and uh, start with those ploy again come the second quarter. 12 point lead for Pampanga, 24 to 12, second quarter of action, Sabi Kot Mubalik. Now let's talk about the next three games on the schedule of the Papanga Giant Lanterns. They face the Quezon Huskers on July 28th. On August 4th, they will be going up against the Makati OK Bet Kings. It's six days after that, they will be facing the Paranaque Patriots in the Brenzi Giao Convention Center. And boy, you know, Pampanga, I guess, also has the toughest remaining games in this pool play. And so you really can't rest if you're number one right now. 
Mark Yee pops out on the flare. That's a three-pointer as you look at the first quarter field goal story on your screens. Yeah, 42% here for uh, Pampanga. There's actually a plus six on attempts uh, for the Pampanga team. And five out of 15, just 33% here for uh, Bacoor. And those, those plus five attempts really coming off the four offensive rebounds that they got. Speaking of Pampanga. Viloria. Does it use the marquee screen? Veloria will go all the mm. way, almost a three-point play, but nevertheless, it's going to be two shots at the line para dito kay Cranial Veloria. Now, I like that setup there for Bacor. It was a middle ball screen or middle action involving Marky and Cranial Veloria with that corner um, being left for, who is that corner guy again? Jaime, Chito Jaime. And Chito Jaime, you know he's got that range from the outside. So if Chito's uh, defender helps out on that cranial drive, it's going to be an immediate kick to Jaime for that 3-3. Three -three. This is actually Chito Jaime's first game back para sa Bacor City Strikers after sitting out a number of their matches due to injury. So this definitely is a big boost sa kanilang lineup. A veteran, a guy who can stretch out the floor a proven scorer here in the league. And when you talk about stretch para dito sa Bacor, you can not mention the name of Alwin Alday. I mean, that man on the move can score, stand still, threes. He can, you name it, he can shoot it from out there. Oh, we haven't seen him yet in this game. It's now the second quarter. Alday has somehow struggled to get consistent playing time mm -hmm. for coach Alex Angeles well that's not a surprise because of the loaded roster that they right. have in every position it's really three man deep and it's been a challenge for coach Alex Angeles to really have a consistent substitution pattern as Marky drains another three point shot how about that coaching mind of coach Alex Angeles involving Marky on an empty ball screen having him flare going to that three on the wing. Uh, Coach, when you say empty ball screen, does it mean walang tao sa corner? Walang tao sa corner. That's what you call an empty ball screen. If you have a pick and roll action on the wing, walang tao dun sa corner, that's called an empty ball screen. And so that entire side of the floor is free for that roller. And that roller is a pick and pop. Marquee is the name. Makes that three. 34 to 19 is the score. Marquis is only a 29.2% three point shooter this season. 7 to nothing run for the strikers. Right. Serrano fakes out Crandall Veloria. Drive to the baseline. It looks like Serrano sold that very well. Yep. And Serrano so far pretty much struggling in the field. He's 0 out of 2. Uh, in six minutes of action. Well, if you're Bacor, you like that. But once he gets in that groove, that guy is willfully going to get inside that, that shaded area and score, whether you like it or not. Uh, definitely. In seven games played this season, he has been their leading scorer, 19.9 points. Now let's turn you over to Mishila Salaysay. Coach Gov expected that at one point dadating ang talo sa kanila kaya mainam na daw ng maaga ito dumating referring to that game against Batangas everybody including Coach Gov lost their focus after defeating Nueva Ecija they became overconfident to make matters worse madaming nagkasakit sa kanila hindi nakapunta sa ensayo hanggang ngayon a few players are still feeling under the weather sa larong ito naniniwala si Coach Gov that they're playing on the same level field and literally neutral grounds but this is anybody's ball game at malaging sinasabi log ang bola at magkakatalo lang kung sino ang mas may determination. Have you coach Mike? Uh, thank you so much Sheila. Well, Governor Dennis Delta Pineda has never been one to brag or be arrogant about what his team has. Uh -huh. He always plays on the humble side and that, that's, that's great because you're the leader of this team mm -hmm. and it has to start from you. That's right. And you know everything is everything on paper is really just potential, no? And and you have to be able to perform it and do it. When you say that on paper you're the top team, show that on the floor because otherwise that's really pure potential, and you can't get anything about just pure potential. It has to be seen on the floor. It, it, to realize that potential, 
you have to have that humility to be right. able to perform and more so learn from the mistakes that you've committed. The timeout will be taken here by Governor Dennis Delta Pineda. Seven minutes and 47 remaining here in the first half. The score is 26 to 19. Premium experience and exceptional stay. You could definitely expect that. No less coming from Boracay de Leia, the official hotel and resort of the Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League. So, kung ako sa inyo, mga kaliga, kung may oras kayo, and if you have uh, a ride going to Boracay de Leia, do so and, and try to experience the official hotel and resort of the MPBL. There you see Captain Marbel, Commissioner Kenneth Doremdes, and Security Chief, the Destroyer, Rudy Distrito, in attendance for our Saturday triple header here at the Laguna Sports Complex in Santa Cruz, Laguna. Abby Palanya, Coach Mike Perez, and Michila Salaysay. Your panel for tonight's set of games. Jamie Bahio trying to go for that offensive rebound. He successfully gets it. Serrano, three for three. He knew it was short. Oh, wow. Gets the offensive rebound. Oh, man. You don't want to get him started now. <laughs> and that is one thing that if you're Coach Alex Angeles, you're not very happy about because he took a shot from the outside yep. and he got the rebound yep. all the way almost on other to the other side of the right. floor. Look at this one. He was the only one up in the air <laughs> to get that ball. That little push shot. And that's adrenaline flowing now in Encho. Those missed shots, it's gonna get it back later on. Are using their coaches challenge on that last oh, early challenge play. here by the Papanga Giant Lanterns on that last out of bounds play. They believe it was last touch on the strikers. It happened right in front of their bench. Uh huh. And when you mentioned about that Boracay de la Ia thing, getting a free ride, if you get one, Javi, please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know, Coach. Don't worry. <laughs> and yeah, bring me with you. <laughs> Malapit na rin naman na ang FIBA break, so may oras oh, yeah, na tayo. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, give a shout-out to uh, the Pampanga VIP, Senior Deputy Speaker Congressman Don Gonzalez, Team Owner and Manager A.G. Gonzalez, City Councilor Brenz Gonzalez, Senior Board Member Mika Gonzalez, Vice Mayor Rudin Gonzalez of Mexico, of course. Governor Dennis Delta Pineda, who is in attendance today. Vice Governor Lilia Nane Pineda, Board Member Mylene Pineda, and Athletic Sports Apparel, the official outfitter of the Papanga Giant Lanterns. Challenge is successful, uh -huh, right, successful. That definitely was last touch by Heruta before it went out. Easy call to make by our referees. That replay definitely did not lie. 28 to 19 is the score. Oh, good seal here. Bahio against Mark Eat. They continue to attack the living legend. Yeah, once that ball gets up high on the key, try a middle high low here. Irregardless of who you are, you gotta attack Marquis. That's the, the, the plan so far that we've seen here in the first half. But of course, our reigning defensive player of the year mm -hmm. able to stand his ground and swat that shot away. Again, th th there are things that's easier said than done. So <laughs> it's Marquis you're talking about here. A foul on the rebound play. Marquis getting the better of JB Bahio in that situation. Oh no, it's gonna be against Marquis. Oh, wow. Is that his second? That is his second. And he's trying to plead his case here. Yeah. Let's look at that again. That is his second. 
I thought it was gonna be an over the back, but I right. think the contact that they called even before uh -huh. that happened. Prior to that one, yeah. And Mark Yi is forced to take a seat on the bench. Michael Cañete back inside. Rebounding story, 20 to 10. I think, I think they're going more Balti now without Marquis on the floor. We're right on cue, Coach Mike. Yeah, expect more touches now for Balti down on the low block. Second chance points, 13 to 0. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Eruta. Pocket pass, Egilos. Baltazar will not challenge anymore. Uh, Egilos actually doing a good job of moving without the ball, but again, it's a 94 feet game. You got to cover both ends. Well, the number one defensive team in the league did not live up to their reputation on that play, leaving Archie Katsipson wide open for the two points. Egilos tried to leave it for Michael Cañete. Baltazar, uh -oh. this is going to uh -oh. be a slam. Uh, not quite. Not quite. Not yet. Not yet. There's a right time for everything, Javi. We beat him last time. We beat him last time. Oh yeah, that, but but that really where the danger is for Pampanga. Oh yeah, definitely. We, we were talking about that open floor basketball. There was a two points, and you do not want to uh, get this crowd behind us excited. Mm -hmm. uh, even though we're playing here at the Laguna Sports Complex, this is looking like the Brenzi Gale Convention Center right now. A lot of fans coming in here for Pampanga. Five minutes and 40 remaining. Time at Muna Tayo Dito. Against the Ilo Ilo United Royals, Balti Baltazar had 15 points, 16 rebounds, 5 assists, and 4 steals. Just a tad bit lower from his averages in terms of points and rebounds. He is number one in those departments this season. Tonight, he already has 8 and 7. Right, and you know, <laughs> that's going to be building some more de de depending on how Bacor is going to defend him. But I do like really how Aguilos has been moving himself without the ball and making himself available. James Quicote, 2 out of 13 against Nueva Ecija. There you go. Finally gets one here. That's a dangerous pass intercepted by the strikers. Heruta getting a brush screen from Aguilos. Heruta missing on the floater, Jan Ermal. And to kiss it off the glass. And a little scuffle happening here after that shot between Aaron Heruta and Balti Baltazar. Uh -huh. Heruta went down on the floor and uh, all those second actions came up. Well, Aaron Heruta certainly doesn't mind punching above his weight class. He's one guy who yeah. is not one to back down. Yeah. And you see him battling it out in there with the big guys. Matter of fact, he was only the guard in that shaded area at that moment. And Martita, siya pa yung nakahiga dun. A good thing for Archie Kachuk right, shot came right. in between right away. I was gonna say the same thing. Uh, that kid is one of the nicest players that we have here in the MPBL, by the way. Mm -hmm. Very, very humble. There you see Balti Baltazar. We were just talking about him. 8.7 rebounds so far. And by the way that his numbers have been going, still, if we were to award our regular season accolades at this point, mm -hmm. he would definitely be a shoe-in for the MVP. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's been leading most of the stat lines in this season. 
but you know, you see a shot earlier of uh, Marquis actually MJ talking to the guys Garcia on the floor. That's, that's how much an impact of a player Marquis has been. Whether on the floor or on the bench, that guy's going to speak his mind. He's actually like the second coach uh, for uh, Coach Alex Angeles. And you love having a player like that. And ironically, you're getting it from a big man. Normally, Guardia is going to do it. That's it. So the final decision has been announced. It's only going to be a warning against Heruta and Baltazar. MJ Garcia will be called for the personal on the contact he committed on the shot by Jan Ermal, who splits his charities. Exactly five minutes to go here in the first half. 10 point lead, 34 to 24. JB Bayo wants it against Mike Cañete. Facing up, Garcia cutting middle. Crosses to the other side. Bahio, tough shot. But he makes it. Well, first of all, that was defense all over him. Second, that wasn't an easy shot. Aaron Heruta doesn't use the screen. A little bit of miscommunication between him and Jemo Egilos, but uh -huh. they're lucky Pampanga had a hand in that pass. Yeah, Tamaka dun ha because he wants that drive that that drive by Haruta. On that side, as you see this action here, look at that. Not an easy shot, falling away, right-handed, with the defense very close to you. Peruta looking, they get it to Jemo Egilos. And this is going to be a back down altogether. Egilos puts Balti to school. Oh, wow. What a move by Jemo Egilos. And Egilos got seven points already in the game. Sorry, kid. I've been playing in this league longer than you have. Oh, yeah. But Sipson drives to the left. Pass intended for a big man. There you go. Intercepted. Cuecote. Sorry, miss. Yeah. On the break. Pampanga on the counter. Garcia doesn't settle for the three-point shot. James Cuecote with the rebound. I'd like to say that was a quick transition by Pampanga, but an even faster defense there by Bacoor. Everybody just going down and just goes to show you why they're the number one defensive team here in this league. Egilos, this time met by two defenders. Montuano, that's a shot missing from 15 feet. Watch for Archie now. Serrano, top of the circle, oh, three. Wow. That is down and through. Para kay Enzo Serrano. You could feel that all together from top of the key. He saw Archie running that wing. No, I'm going to take this. It's on me. And certainly gaining confidence after that shot he made earlier. Yeah. Eruta picks up his dribble, gives it up to Montuano. Cuecote wants a screen from Mark. Montuano, that pass through forward on the roll. And the feed intended for Luis Sangalang was too ahead of him. I so want you to take a look at the three players on the front court. Archie, Luis, and Enjo. We are going to guard out there in the open. But look at this move here by Egulus. Oh boy. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not every day that a player has the confidence in the guts to oh. go up against... Well, the, the, do, the most dominant player on both sides of the floor... This season in Balti Baltazar. I totally agree with you, Abby. Not an easy task at all. And also one of the top shot blockers in right, the league. Right. Montuano. Shot clock is winding down for the strikers. Ooh. A bailout three by Zanir Mal. This kid continues to amaze this season. A guy is down, that's Aaron Heruta. It looks like. It's Balti Baltazar who is the guilty party here. Wow, and before this shot, Nermal was actually 0 out of 2 from the field. Alright, there's the shot. But watch Heruta down low. Here you see him. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would... Uh, maybe nominate him for award but right. that, that's not gonna win the best after right. award yet for me right <laughs> he definitely sold it though yep. and the marketplace bought it <laughs> <laughs> offensive foul against Baltazar Heruta backing down Binuya Heruta 
Oh, the wow. Pass. What a fake by Aguilos. Well, the impact of Jamo Aguilos has certainly brought this production for the strikers inside the new heights. Aguilos is actually four out of five from the field right now. And he makes his first free throw. And he's a what? Played for almost 11 minutes. That game against Nueva Ecija, he played close to 18 minutes. Only scored six points. And right now, he leads the strikers in the scoring department. Timeout now called once again on the floor. Two minutes and four seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Back inside the Laguna Sports Complex in Santa Cruz, Laguna. This is only the second time this season that we're holding games here. The home court of your Laguna Cra Asia heroes. They will be facing the Iloilo United Royals later on at 8 o'clock p.m. There you see the MPBL leadership led by Commissioner Kenneth Doremdes. Good sized crowd we're having here. And actually, majority coming from the side of the Giant Lanterns. They brought in their fans for this big game. The top squad of the South versus the top team in the North. Jan Ermal hit the three from there. Ernie Hurt and another make. Para dito kay Jan Ermal. He's got Coach Mike Perez so excited here beside me. Wow. See, this kid... It's amazing how he's doing this. His star is shining the brightest in a constellation of stars here with the strikers. I totally agree with you. Look at this one here. Got that screen. That defender got held up. How about that rise for that three? Yeah, he already has the height Ooh, yeah, to wow. be able to uh, shoot over defenders, but the lift also, and there you see the scuffle underneath after that make by Jan Ermal. Certainly getting a bit more chippier here in the second uh -huh. quarter. Well, it does matter how you close quarters, so it's very important for Bacoor while they lack a little bit in the mid of the uh, first and the start of the second, you gotta finish strong before at the, at the turn of the half. Well, Heruta may not be getting the points para sa kanyang kupunan, but he's had an impact Mm -hmm. Especially here in the second half of this second quarter. John Nermal free! Pushing foul at number 10, Mark Montuano, that's his first four on the second. So three by Nermal will count. Yeah. Score is 39 to 34 now, but there's gonna be a pushing foul called on Mark Montuano. And let's take note prior to those two threes, he was 0 out of 2 from the field. And boy, those threes really bringing them back here. There you see the field goals this quarter. It's 6 out of 12 for Pampanga and 7 of 13 for Bacoor. And one more coming. That's an unselfish play. Galing dito kay Jan Ermal. Had all the reason to take it all the way but left it for Alvin Alday. Raymond Binuya penetrating the defense and drawing yet another foul on Mark Montuano. This time it's of the defensive variety. Uh, look at that steal though. Those three guys were ready to trap him in case of a scramble defense. And how about this finish by Alvin Aldai? Just what the doctor ordered for Bacoor. And immediately after he made that layup, went down and defended. But Binuya's just too crafty using that screen, making sure that screen gets hit, gets hit, 
so that he'd freeze him up. That's only the second miss of the game overall as a team for the Giant Lanterns. Binuya oh, wow. picking Heruta's pocket. Yeah. JLC will go all the way for two points. Well, you can't turn your back on the Binuya on the backcourt. You got to stay in front, stay in control, never turn that ball over. Heruta kicks it out to Aldai. Travel right there. He really has some tendency to do that sometimes. Yeah. He, he's got that little... I guess he was waiting for that pass to come in a little bit earlier, but this was what I was saying, that you can't spin off Benuya in the backcourt because on that turn, he's going to steal it from behind you. It's always very impressive to be able to do that at this level. Yeah. Eruta, forward to Montuano, able to save it, but to the wrong guy. Here he is, Raymond Binuya will challenge Jamo Egelos. Raymond Binuya flex them, sir. That's a big basket over the big man. Yeah, you gotta give that highlight to Binuya, but how about that? You know, uh, that uh, defense of uh, Egelos, not minding what's gonna come up as long as this layup is gonna be challenged. And Binuya just very forceful on that attack. Look at this one. He knew that bigger guy was coming. Just lifted. Before Eglis could even get to that block. That is definitely how you should finish mm -hmm. against a much taller defender. Go up strong. Uh -huh. There, he flexes those muscles. Yeah. Mr. Benuya. There's actually three ways you can finish in that situation. Do a pull-up, jump stop in a floater, and go strong and attack that guy. Of the three, the third one's the least one that you want <laughs> you want your smaller guy to do, but that's what Binuya did. Yung eh. Oh yeah. Aldai is at the line by virtue of the penalty situation that Papanga already is in. But Aldai misses his first free throw. He was two out of two in their last game. He only scored six points in twelve minutes. Aldai missed one free throw. Did one turnover, but I still like this guy being on the floor. I mean, he, he's going to be a key piece here for Bacor. Shot clock is off. Last shot time here for the strikers. They want the ball in Aldai's hands. Apolonio trying to pressure. Sangalang shows hard. Liu attacks. Oh, wow. What Leaves a pass. Jabo Angelos clear for the slam. Oh my goodness! What a game we're having here, ladies and gentlemen! Oh man, we were talking about Aldai being that key piece. And so once that defense got in, he kicked it out. And you just saw that skip pass. There's this decision there by Liu to attack. Second defender comes in. Easy dump inside to Egulus. And really, that shot made you shout it out. <laughs> 12 points in this game and that is the exceptional pass that's brought to you by Burake de Lille at the official hotel and resort of the MPBL Demo Egilos. What a game he's been having here in the first half for the Bacor City Strikers. Oh boy, what a way to end the half. <laughs> they are really proving that this is one of the best games that we've had this season. That's just the first 20 minutes of action, folks. Okay, Alice, halftime analysis when we return.
paghahandaan Kaya yung mayanig ang pakbakan Todo suporta ang lahat sa kanya-kanyang kubunan Kayo pa rin ay nanonood ng Ogay Bet, Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League. Live po tayo dito sa Laguna Sports Complex, Santa Cruz, Laguna. At sa halftime, makakasama ko. Siyempre, the one and only Dennis Abelian, the team owner of Bacoor City Strikers. Sir Dennis, magandang gabi. Well, simula nung sumali yung Bacoor sa MPBL, nandun ka na yung witness the success and failures of the team. Tatlong beses nung nakatapat ang uh, Pampanga, that's August 26, 2022, October 17, 2019, July 3, 2018. Pero lahat ng laro na yon hindi naging pabor sa inyo ang end game result. Pero how will you make sure that tonight magiging sa inyo naman ang panalo? Well, uh, kahit hindi Pampanga yung kalaban namin ngayon, talagang uh, every game namin talagang... Uh, Pinagpiprayan namin, preparation, and uh, talagang pinagbubutihan naman natin lagi. Nagkataon lang na uh, talagang from the start, eh, hindi kami makalusot sa Pampanga. And it's a very big challenge for us. Uh, pinagbubutihan naman namin at talagang pag lumalaro naman ng mga strikers team natin, nasa puso talaga ang laban nila. Meron po ba kayong mga pasasalamatan o mensahe sa inyong mga taga-suporta? Yes, uh, unang-una, pinapasalamatan ko yung mga taga-bakor na dumayo pa rito sa Santa Cruz, Laguna. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa pag-host ng uh, mga laban na ito dito. Siyempre, ang aming uh, mayor, Mayor Strike B. Revilla, ang kanyang asawa, si Ma'am Shea Cabal Revilla, si Baby Shaley, si Rob, at ang kanyang girlfriend, uh, Ang ating major sponsor, ang Philbet.com, Almacar Construction, RKF Builders, Arkinil Tavu, Cap RR Laxon, City Advertising, Debantan Sports, ML, 24 Alkaline C. Ang aking pamilya, syempre si Ezra na nandito ngayon, si Adrian, si Patty, si Enzo, syempre si Liza. Happy, happy birthday kay Mami Chityap at sa kanyang family, kay pareng Bobby Bautista. At binabati ko rin ang ating uh, band ngayon, ang Panapaan 29th Regiment. Maraming salamat po, Sir Dennis Abelio. All the best for tonight's game. At syempre, eto na nga, papunta na tayo sa another exciting part of our game. Walang iba, ang MPBL shoutouts kung saan babasahin natin ang mga messages ng ating mga kaliga. At unahin na nga natin dyan si Evelyn Santos Puyayaw. Go, go, Bacoor Strikers! Good luck sa inyong lahat. Ayan, added motivation para sa Bacoor. Next, we have Edgar Gutlay. Yan, bakbakan ng ganda, bakbakan na magandang laban ito. Yes, legit na tapatan ng mga top teams ng North and South. LC Salvador Azores, for the win, Pampanggenios. Tingnan natin kung magiging consistent hanggang dulo ang Giant Lanterns. Ayan, if you have any messages sa inyong mga paboritong koponan at mandalaro, just key in to our social media pages. Third and fourth quarter action sa pagbabalik yan ng okay Bet Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League.
Basketball League. Labay nagkakaisa Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao Basketball na Ang bawat labay pinaghahandaan Kaya yung mayanig ang bakbakan Todo suporta ang lahat Sa kanya-kanyang pupunan Labay nagkakaisa Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao Basketball na Ang bawat labay pinaghahandaan Kaya yung mayanig ang bakbakan Todo suporta ang lahat Sa kanya-kanyang pupunan We're at the half here between the Manga Giant Lanterns and the Bacor City Strikers. The battle of the best of the North and the best of the South. And these two teams have fought to a very exciting ball game. And the Giant Lanterns continue to hold on to the advantage. A six-point lead after the first 20 minutes, 44 to 38. 
Well, Bacoor really relaxed a little bit mid of the first quarter and the uh, start of the second quarter, but things started out really, uh, ended up really strong for Bacoor. 47% from the field, ito nga Pampanga, samantalang 46% naman for Bacoor. Rebounds is plus 7 still for Pampanga, but the second chance points 13 and 1. But, you know, Bacoor able to make more assists, 13 versus 8, and none more sensational than that buzzer beating slam at the end of the half. Oh, that certainly rocked us in our seats. Jamo Egilos beating the buzzer with that slamma jamma. And that has really characterized that second quarter of the Bacor City Strikers. The Giant Lanterns is really investing on a good lead to start this ball game. There you see that slam by Jamo Egilos of the feet by Joel Liu. So good team basketball being shown here early on by the strikers. They definitely have to do that throughout this ball game to be able to get one off against the top team in the North. Minuya is leading all scorers for Pampanga alongside Balti Baltazar with eight. Sa kabila naman, it's Jamo Egilos with 12 points. Nermal with seven. Marquis with six. And Joel Liu with a basket and one. For three points. Yeah, and itong si Binuya has not yet missed from the field. And so far, siya yung spark dito para sa Pampanga. That's going to be a three-second violation against JB Bayo. Uh, said better red lion taking too long inside the shaded area. He begins this third quarter alongside Enzo Serrano, MJ Garcia, Balti Baltazar, and Archie Concepcion. Their steam starting unit. Alday, left wing three-pointer, no good. And to Serrano, one on one against Joel Liu. He will soar. Egilos calls the rebound, able to save it to Jan Nermal. Nermal, the in and out. One hander, bit to the left. It's going to go the other side, Pampanga basketball. And uh, Egilos continues with this excellent uh, style of play here. Uh, able to get that rebound on the other end, try to initiate that run, but Nermal unable to complete it. Baltazar spin baseline single coverage against Egilos JB Bayo the offensive rebound the number one rebounding team in the league continues to crash the glass well one thing's clear every time um, Balti's gonna get that ball on that low block they're anticipating a baseline footstep drop and so they got that second defender coming Samantala itong uh, Pampanga right now going on zone Egilos Jumper on the way. Wow. He continues to sizzle. Man, and Egilus only missed once here. He's six out of seven from the field. Baltazar, this time he's cutting. And he knocks down the hook shot. And he says, that's it. <laughs> I'm coming in. <laughs> you got to defend me now. 48 to 40. A zone here for the Giant Lanterns. Yep. Nirmal, free on the left wing. Back irons at three. I'll die with the offensive rebound. Oh, that's against Balti Baltazar. Great effort by the Bacoor City Guard. Yeah, and Alvin Aldai, really, that's the value that he brings to you uh, on the floor. I mean, if he doesn't convert, he's very active on the floor, can get you rebounds, can get you stops. Liu, out to Nirmal. He attacks middle. Extra pass. Aldai's free. I'll die. Still no connection from the outside. He's missed his last two here in the third quarter. Good decision here to wait for his teammates. JB Bajo will back down Marquis. E. Serrano sets himself up for the three point shot. No good. Offensive rebound for Balti. Baltazar. No roll on the shot. Wow, and you still got to give credit to Egulus here. He's been just that force to reckon with inside the paint against Balti Baltasar. Liu will put it out. Still a lot of time on their shot clock. Aldai will not settle. Liu jumps up. That shot is long. It will go the other side. Giant Lanterns will take possession. And Alvin Aldai continues to be very active. I mean, he drives, kicks it out, relocates. There was a missed shot, goes for that rebound. 
you know, these are the little things that can actually keep you in the game. And Aldaya only has two points so far to his name. Baltazar, that's too easy. Yeah, and that, that helped defenders late too. I mean, one foot inside the shaded area might be a bit of a challenge to stop Balti from there. Ten point lead. Nermal goes inside. Tough shot. Scramble for the loose ball ends up with Archie Concepcion. Offense has slowed down a bit here for Bacoor after that zone uh, setup. Baltazar will be fouled from behind. He's going to take two shots. Yeah, presence of mind to locate where Baltazar is after Egulus got um, committed to that defense on that initial attack. Baltazar so far in this game, eight points and nine rebounds. Six minutes and change remaining here in the third quarter. Baltasar sinks the first. Could be a double-double night here for Balti. I don't doubt it. Yeah. He's had 17 straight double-doubles wow. this season. Serrano gets the offensive rebound here for Bambanga. Enzo picks up the rock. Garcia. Crosses over to the other side. Balti wants it. He'll take it from the outside. That's no good. Jan Nermal with the rebound. Good defense there by Bacoor. Defending all options and giving away a three for Balti. That's good. Pampanga continues to stick with the zone. Aldai, short. Gets his own miss. Egilos trying to power his way through the defense. Inside, outside. Ball movement here for the strikers. <laughs> Ends up with a basket in one. Para dito kay Jan Nermal. Once those offensive rebounds came in, it really distorted that zone. It became a scramble defense, so everybody had to defend whoever was in front of them. Right there, spin going middle. And just cleared it out for Nermal. Strong finish too through contact. This guy is on his way to being one of the stars of this league. Oh, look at Marquis there. Wow. Well, impressive effort that's going against Balti Baltazar and JB Bahio. There's going to be a loose ball foul against Pampanga. 51 to 42. Slow start for the strikers here in the third quarter. Pastoran and Quecote have now checked in para sa Bacoor City. James for three. No good. Balti with a rebound. Uh, you are talking about him getting a double double in this game, coach. That, that already is that's, the case. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But Zepson, last minute pass. They get it to Enzo. Shot clock at 10. Serrano. Grab it. Floater from the free throw area is good. I have to say that word because he actually waited for that defender to be held up by that screen before he made a decision. Matter of fact, even before he went to that floater, he surveyed if there was a free guy underneath. And said there was no one, he finished it. Back to man to man here for Pampanga. But Sepchon giving normal problems. Oh, he had to hoist it up. Mark Yee trying to go for the offensive board. Loses possession. JB Bayo, the stretch. That's no good. Now they gotta make them pay now. Take it back. Pastoran. Now the controls here for the black shirts. Side ball screen. Quecote looking for Marky. Being defended by JB Bayo. Marky, one hander. Offensive rebound ends up with Nermal and he will be fouled. That's gonna go against Baltazar. Well Marky actually waited for that off ball action. With nothing coming, he had to create for himself. And thankfully, after that cut by Nermal, Marky made that shot and the offensive rebound went to him. Four-man substitution para dito 
sa Pampanga Giant Lanterns. Jason Apolonio, John Lloyd Clemente, Alan Liwag, and Raymond Binuya mm -hmm. will now check in. Well, Bacoor City right now, while they, they trail, really looking more like a pit bull, just biting it out and not, you know, giving up. Strikers coming off a loss in their last game against the defending champions in Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguards where they were able to keep in step with the defending champs until the third period. But the fourth quarter was just a different story. Binuya sidestep to the basket. Oh, wow. And the score. I don't think Binuya's missed yet in this game. He's actually, what, four out of four, five out of five. That's quality minutes off that Pampanga bench para kay Raymond Binuya. A miss from the outside by Marky. E. Apolonio, touch pass. What a great sequence for Pampanga in the open floor. And Coach Alex Angeles says, that's trouble right there. You got Balti getting that uh, fast break started with that defensive rebound. And that ball swung from left to right until that left guy finally made that finish. Look at this one, Binuya using that screen. Again, they attack Marquis, little floater. He's now four out of four from the field. And here, the fast break opportunity capitalized on by Pampanga. Three men touching the rock, ending up with Alan Liwag. 57 to 44, three minutes and 24 remaining in the third quarter. Alright, let's take a look at this video of uh, Enzo Serrano. I think this is uh, him taking a video of his teammate. No, this is Enzo Serrano actually playing billiards. So this seems to be his pastime when he's not playing basketball. And more on this from a report by Sheila Salaysay. At nakita nyo na nga ang ebidensya na hindi lang sa basketball magaling itong si Enzo Serrano. Nag-aala Efren Bata Reyes din. Itong si Enzo kapag walang ensayo, nagsimulang maglaro at 15, nagustuhan daw niya ang sport na ito dahil nare-relax daw siya. Pero kung tatanungin, mas mahirap daw ang billiards dahil mas nakaka-pressure, mas mahirap kesa mag-shoot ng bola sa ring. And uh, kung gusto niyo pang makita, sumargo, tumumbok at tumira si Enzo sa social media account lang na yan, makikita. Happy and Coach Mike? Thank you so much, Sheila. Other players, they play golf uh -huh. to uh, de-stress from the game, Enzo Serrano plays billiards. Ibang klase rin yung cross-training ni Enzo Serrano. Oh. Eh, no? okay. <laughs> uh, maybe it re it helps him uh, adapt to pressure situations yeah. dito sa laro natin. And I like that he said na medyo mas mahirap yung billiards laruin. No? <laughs> mas mahirap asintayan. And alam mo kung ano pang mas mahirap, Javi? Yung nasa ibang bansa ka, nasa Germany ka, at nanonood ka ng paborito mong laro. So shout out to our bro, Christopher Holiano, Oy. watching all the way from Germany. Happy viewing to you, bro. And hope you're having fun. Anong oras na kaya sa Germany? Eh, oo nga, malang <laughs> <Daling> araw yan. <laughs> Top Holiano, we miss you back here. Jan Nermal being aggressively pressured by Jason Apolonio. Nermal will be fouled by the Pampanga defense. Pero kita mo yung activity ni Nermal, no? Using that screen by Jammer Hamito. He snaked it after he saw that defense was dropping off and really just continued to press on that attack, putting a lot of pressure on that defense as he went downhill. There you can see the improvement of Jan Ermal. His ball handling ability yeah. has gone so far. He's able to handle oh, wow. that kind of defensive intensity, but great action on that play by Michael Cañete and James Cuecote. Yeah, just pretty much standard 1-4 low baseline out of bounds. Post guys lift. Little flex pass. 
And that cut underneath on the baseline. Sangalang, that's blocked by Jammer wow. Amito. Amito, by the way, is playing against his former squad. Yep. Pastoran leaves it for Cuecote. It was almost a steal for Pampanga. Veloria, those mid-range jumpers are his favorite. Just missing on that occasion. Pinuya. Yeah, and Bakoor immediately recognizing that a missed shot is like a turnover. You got to go back and de defend, which is exactly what they're doing. And here, the strikers getting a steal. Clemente will give up the foul to prevent the fast break. This is almost similar to what happened at the end of the second quarter. The strikers on an impending run right. here. Right, right, exactly. And, you know, if, if you're Coach Alex Angeles, you kind of love where you are because you're, you're staying in pace. You're only down what? It's, it's just a three-possession game. And so a little stop here could change everything. Just a regular foul. They foul were trying to review if it, there was some unnecessary contact. But that was an easy decision by our refs. Reina Veloria at the line for two shots. Only averaging three points per game this season. And Veloria, one of the guys coming on over from the Bacolod squad of yeah. last year. That was mm -hmm. also coached by Coach Alex Angeles. And make no mistake about it, this guy's a scorer too. I mean, he can create for himself and as, as well as, you know, do it within the flow of the offense. 57 to 48. Almost nine minutes gone by here. We're now winding down this third quarter. Oh, wow. Good action. Sorry miss by Jason Apolonio. Yeah. And he gets entangled with his former teammate, Jammer Hamito. A little action between two, the two big guys. There you see it. That arguably was an easy look for Jason Apolonio. Yeah, nothing intentional, just two guys really just trying to get uh, some physicality in this game. They siguro na mislang nila yung isa tisa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amito will be taking two shots here because the Giant Lanterns are already in the penalty. But I like that uh, Bakoor is actually doing things in the flow of young schemes. You know, no one-on-ones, no isolations. They're really just trusting the, the plan for this game. Which is how really that's how you attack as a, a strong team like a Pampanga if you go against them. Cross court pass, Clemente to Apolonio. Cuecote trying to tap that from behind. Sangalang almost blocked again by Jammer Hamito that forced him into the tough pass. Cuecote hangs in the air and scores. I was going to say that Cuecote might have rose up a little bit earlier, but he glided that comfortably, kissed that off the glass. That's God-given ability to you by James Cuecote Benuya. That's his first miss of the game. Apolonio with the offensive rebound. Good job. A steal by Veloria. Pastoran is unbothered on the other side for two points. Well, this, this is just a three-point lead. Exactly. Just a one-possession game here. Closing out quarter strong is what Bak Bakor has been. 57-54. to Two-man game between Alan Liwag and Raymond Benuya. Sangalang, they know he's going left no matter what. Fakes out his defender. That's going to be a foul against Jammer Hamito. Yeah, and you see how many defenders went in there for uh, Sangalang because they know inside he always stays in control and he can finish. But look at this one. This one's what I felt he glided, uh, lifted a little bit earlier, but that glide really able to kiss that off. How about this deal? There you go, Jimboy Pastoran. That's his first two points of the game, by the way. 12.3 mm -hmm. seconds remaining. Oh, wow. Yan ang tinatawag mo na ka play. Didn't we see Bakoor do the same for Nueva Ecija in that last game? Yeah, there was actually a play like that. Right. Kote failing to beat the buzzer. But we end 
this third period with the strikers down by five. Another great end to the quarter for the, the strikers, but Pampanga starting this period off spectacularly as well. Well, one thing they gotta continue is keep close out strong. All right, fourth quarter of action. Saming pagbabalik, magbabalik ang Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League. Alright, let's take a look at the update on our player matchup for this game between the Papanga Giant Lanterns and the Bacor City Strikers. We have Echo Serrano going up against James Quecote. And so far, these two players haven't really been playing uh, to their numbers so far in this game. Albeit quiet production from these two players well it's really just all because other guys are contributing in this game other guys are more active and you know that bodes well if you're either from Pampanga or Bacoor you need other guys to step up outside of these two nine para kay Ed Serrano six markers for James Cuecote member Serrano in the seven games that he's played this season for the Giant Lanterns has been averaging 19.9 points per contest while Cuecote is at 12.6. Uh, that's gonna be a foul right there. Well, one thing is stopping him, but to be that aggressive, you're, you're getting within his cylinder, not allowing him and impeding his action. So that definitely is gonna be a foul. Garcia will inbound to Enzo Serrano. Guarded by Cranial Veloria. Oh, the spin baseline. Oh. What a finish by Echa Serrano. Crafty move by the former LaSalle guard. Yeah, and ob he obviously saw that the top side was that he was getting denied on the top. So he just took the baseline. One explosive step and got in there. Kokote trying to answer. Three pointer is no good. The pitch ahead. JB Bayo. This is going to be an easy Ooh. start. The chase down by James Quecote. I think they're gonna go and review it. Oh my goodness. But if that was clean, oh boy, what a block that wow. was. Yeah. That's something we don't see here a lot in the country. Right. That's tried too, look at that, look at that leap. Oh, you be the judge of that touch. Oh, he got hit on the board already. That's gonna be counted, yeah. Oh, pity. That would have been pity on the oh, top yeah. 10 place. Right. <laughs> but credit the effort, though, man. The way he run after that. These guys are on a mission defensively. They don't want to get unchallenged shots out in the open floor. There's that zone again for Pampanga. Pastoran trying to bust that zone. That has timing their offense in the third quarter. I thought that really slowed down Bahor eh? in zone na yan. Garcia, sidestep, no good on the finish. And there's gonna be a foul. Who's gonna, gonna go against, I think it's gonna go against Archie Katsupson. Uh -huh. Oh, it's gonna be against oh, okay. Bayo, that's number four. Archie wants it on him. <laughs> and Archie is <laughs> still telling our referees that dapat siya yung tinawagan. Or trying to uh, stand up for his teammate, but uh, yeah. our referees will not reverse that call. Uh -huh. 
Interesting substitution here early in the fourth. Mark Montuano will be checking in here early para kay Mike Cañete. They're going to need more perimeter shooters and three shooters out here to bust this zone. Uh, Bastaran, a zero out of two to begin the fourth quarter from distance. 63 to 54. Serrano gets a step on Veloria. Finish inside is no good. Veloria leaves it. Montuano fakes out Baltazar. Too strong on the point blank shot. The Giant Lanterns on the run. Serrano still missing. Uh, he will be fouled. Two and more shots at the line coming up para dito kay si Serrano. Yeah, and he's been attacking that rack. That's the most important thing. At least he's not stopping shooting. He continues to be attacking despite the misses. And so I think on the mind of Encho right now, he's saying, magkasing hirap yata yung billiard tsaka laro tati ang hirap shoot. Well, he's got 11 points though on a 4 out of 10 shooting. He's 3 out of 5. 3 out of 5 from 2. No, 3 out of 7 though. And 1 out of 4 from 3. And that was just his first miss from the line in this game. Nabati mo kasi yung focus niya, Coach. There you see on your screens, Governor Dennis Delta Pineda. Yeah, certainly made a great program out of his province. There you go. In terms of basketball. That guy can score the basketball. Chito Jaime getting it from distance. That's what we were talking about earlier. I mean, leaving Chito right there in the corner for those threes in case that defense tags off him. Oh, wow. Fourth quarter. This is it's a Serrano's stomping ground. Yeah. Big time players love the big time moments. And Mr. Serrano proving that he thrives in these kinds of situations. He is must see TV for the Pampanga Giant Lantern. And how about that scoop on a layaway? Whew. He completes the three point play. Score is 66 to 57. Nine point lead para dito sa Pampanga. The biggest lead of the Giant Lanterns was 13. Viloria thought that he had that down through the net. But Sepson gets the forward pass. Garcia will pull it out. No, no need to rush uh -huh. for Pampanga. Corner guy's gonna lift. There you go. Catch, set, fire. That's a miss. And the ball will stay with Pampanga. There's gonna be a foul, I believe. Laban dito kay Mark Matuano. I love that side ball screen by Pampanga where that corner's filled. And you have Archie on that corner. Once they use that screen going middle, Archie can lift. You can throw that ball back to him and he can be the point of attack. Serrano attacking his counterpart for tonight's player matchup in James Cuecote. Cuecote forcing a stop. James attacks Concepcion. Short on the jumper. In that game against Nueva Ecija, Baco Or actually had difficulty, especially in the first quarter, attacking the half court set, which is what's happening now uh, in them, or to them rather. Baltazar blocked by Jamo Egilos. So they're better off in open floor, just like this one. Chito Jaime, short. Mark Montuano gets the hoop and the harm. And so they really want to push that pace here. Chito had a good shot. But placing yourself in the right place at the right time earns you an offensive rebound and an end one. Those are the first two points of the game para kay Mark Montuano. Last year, he was the striker's leading scorer. But because of the revamped roster that they now have, he has slid down to a, a much smaller role here for the strikers. 
One which he had difficulty accepting at the start, but you know, this team is all about winning and he perfectly understood that right. after that struggle of playing small minutes. Just trying really to do what his team needs him to do. Wow, oh, that's a block by Concepcion. Big defensive rejection. But Eguilo is able to recover. He leaves it for Nem Nermal. Great challenge by JB Bayo on the recovery in oh, transition man. defense. Man. How about that defensive stop, though, on the other end? Aguilus had it, but never giving up defensively. Archie just saying, uh-uh, not tonight. That was all basketball. That swat by Archie Concepcion. That's just what you love about Mr. Concepcion. He plays both sides of the floor. When this week's game's highlights come out, a lot of them are going to come from this game. For sure, I don't doubt it. Balti, doubled by Cuecote. That leaves Serrano wide open. A little bit too strong. Jan Ermal with rebound number seven in this game. Yeah, you're going to want to push it here. Don't want that defense to set up. Egilos almost lost his footing. And that lack of control, all, all, all the almost lack of control, almost led to a turnover, which eventually did. And Concepcion scoring on the other side. Para dito sa Pampanga. Uh, could spell trouble here for Bacoor. You don't want Archie Concepcion to get involved now. Now that Encho's woken up in the fourth. Nermal gathers and scores the juice. Well, that's a good thing for uh, Bacoor. You still see that consistency and that point production from Nermal. Seeing those gaps and attacking that immediately. 13 points, 6 rebounds in the game. Para dito kay John Nermal. Serrano picks up his dribble. Concepcion. Gets by Chito Jaime. There's going to be a foul against the veteran. That knee creating contact on that shot by Encho Serrano. See here, Concepcion, the sidestep. What a finish over the much taller Jamo Egilos. Nermal able to find a way going through the basket. To make this 68-62. Under five minutes to play here in this game. One of the remaining blockbuster matchups that we have set for this season. Nakala kasi ng lahat ng tao tapos na sa Pampangan may Baysia. Of course, this one is definitely showing up to be a great game as well. Top squad of the North versus the top team in the South. Concepcion off the screens. No good. Oh, look at Raymond Binuya. Big James Cuecote's pocket. Wow. Binuya now with 12 points in the game. Dangerous pass. Serrano intercepts. Serrano trying to take separation. Or make separation rather. Uh -huh. And he crashes in to the defense of James Quecote as Quecote tried to pull the chair from underneath. And boy, that body of uh, Encho Serrano really taking a lot of contact. How about that steal there? My <laughs> <laughs> celebration. Oh, what's happening here? Oh boy. Oh boy. That happened so quick. I was looking at the numbers here on right. my laptop. Me too. Me too. I didn't see that. We got to see the replay. Well, at least our security team was able to get in the middle of things. You know, lang nakita ko eh. I saw James Quecote walking on over to the bench. Uh -huh. And then Archie Concepcion trying to come in the middle and separate. Mm -hmm. And then I saw Quecote confront it to see Archie Concepcion. But there was something that happened before that. We got to see that. Yeah, me too. I was looking at the numbers and quite surprised there was something going on on the floor. 
<laughs> this game has been nothing short of intensity, of excitement. Ayan, tinignan natin. There you see, it's Raymond Binuya and Cito Jaime. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh! <laughs> na... Ano ba tawag dyan? Nabatu... Hindi na naman niya nabatukan eh. Concepcion was yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. separate the two. Right. And Cito Jaime <laughs> acted as if he was pushed. Yeah. And then that started the confrontation between Pecote and Concepcion. Well, how about our security guys getting in there and taking control? Yeah, that could have escalated quickly. Mm -hmm. and pent up, fired up emotions in this game. Definitely contributing to the tempers of these players on the floor. But, siempre, hindi ka pwede kumurap dito. Yeah. Fourth quarter, four minutes and 11 seconds remaining. This is an eight point ball game, but. You can't say that Pampanga is already out of the woods. This is still anybody's ball game, yeah, right, Coach Mike? Definitely. We still have a lot of time. And, you know, like what we said, this is just an eight point lead with four and 11 remaining. And at the rate that uh, the strikers have been playing and the way that been closing, they've been closing out the previous quarters, you know, could still be a possibility. Archie Katsipshon in this game, 7 points and 3 rebounds. Alongside Raymond Binuya, who has been playing spectacularly off the bench. 12 points in a couple of boards to go with an assist. He has provided a lot of firepower, especially in the open floor. There you see James Kwekote. It has not been his day once again, uh -huh. Coach Mike. Been a struggle for Kwekote. There are a few flashes of brilliance. But, you know, overall, you, you kind of expect more from him. Six points, but he does have eight rebounds. Right. He's kind of mirroring that performance that he had against Nueva Ecija. Two out of 13 from the field in that game against the Rice Vanguards. Today, mm -hmm. he's three out of 11. The non-stats, though, is he's the one pushing that ball in, in, in open floor para sa Bacoor. And so him bringing the ball down, down court is already a threat in itself so that keeps the de defense busy and so you know maganda rin, uh, even the camp of pampanga is checking on their players tell telling archie earlier na you know you, you gotta stop this oh, di kaya pwede kumurap dito. yep foul at number 15 james kwekute his first Technical foul on number two, Archie Concepcion. Technical foul on number 28, Chito Jaime. Technical foul on number 15, James Cuecote. Technical foul on number 30, Raymond Binuya. All for Unsportsman like Banger. Raymond Binuya out of the playing court. Two to two technical fouls. Oh, wow. All right, that, those were a lot of calls. Yeah. So, okay, one, it's going to be on Archie. A foul on Archie Concepcion, and then four technical fouls given right, out. Right. That's one on Cuecote, that's one on Archie Concepcion, one on Chito Jaime, right. and one on Raymond Binuya, right. who has now picked up his second technical foul that uh -huh. has uh, merited his expulsion from this game. Well, Sayang, Binuya was actually one of the guys we were considering to be part of the best players of the game. He's, he's what, 5 out of 6 from the field, came up with 12 points, 13 minutes of action, perfect from 2. Wow. And the timeliness of his shots, as you look at Governor Dennis Delta Pineda right there. Serrano able to sink those two free throws to bring this lead back up to double digits. Aaron Heruta has checked back in here for Coach Alex Angeles. And this continued zone has actually really slowed down the offense of Bacoor. Egilos, free throw line jumper, too strong. Rebound goes to Archie Concepcion. And the thing that's changed here for Pampanga is not, they're not looking to run, they're looking to set it up. Serrano Good on the pass. cut. 
And now you see the new recruits really gelling here right. very well. Uh huh. But the holdovers of the giant lanterns at play explain the chemistry. Yeah, ang ginagawa kasi ng Bacor ngayon is on the on the post. Every time that Balti posts up, they push them out. So he's farther away from the low block. And so what they did, they get that ball to Balti, have a second cutter in Serrano, go to that block, let him post up. Eh, kanina, ano nangyari? Ano nakuha ni uh, Serrano, defense collapse, had to give it up to the other side. A miss by Bayo, but... Look at how far Balti's been from the low block. Ampanga with another shot here. But Sepson misses. Aaron Eruta calling out the play here. What has been different para dito sa Bacoor City compared to what Batangas did against Pampanga in terms of defense as a big three-point shot is drained here by John Ermal. Well, I think one thing that they did is that, you know, they, they understand that ball's gonna go to Balti Baltasar, but, you know, they push him out. Push him out of his comfort zone. Bayo drawing another foul. Well, the thing that's different with how Batangas also did was that the guards actually scored from the outside, especially in that crucial second half. You see this made three right there. By Nermal, he continues to be that shining player for uh, Bacoor. Bayo misses another free throw. And yeah, to talk about the strikers, it's only Egilos in Nermal in double figures. Yeah. The next top scorer for them is Mark E and James Kwekote with six apiece. Yeah, and the offense of Batangas, it almost looked exclusive. Looked exclusive to, ano eh, to three-pointers. Eh. Yeah, they were very lucky to have Levi Hernandez, uh -huh. Jong Baloria, and Rafi Octubre, who eventually won player of the game honors to knock down three-point shots for them. Heruta, floater inside the lane. That's good. That's a big basket for the strikers. Leads down to six. A little sense of urgency here. Papanga, giant lantern. So we'll call a timeout on the floor. Two minutes and 19 seconds. Heruta. Coming back from an injury. His first game back. He's wearing that mask because of that broken nose. Yeah, you could see, see uh, Baltasar didn't even attempt to help because he knew that Marquis was right there ready for that drop. All right, we're going to go to the Philippines Basketball League. We're going to go to the Philippines. Last game against the Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguard, San Ermal had 19 points, 12 of those coming in the second half, trying to spark that rally in the third and fourth periods, but uh, Rice Vanguard were just too much for the strikers in that game. Tonight, he has 16, 8, and a couple of assists. And he's been consistently that guy helping out Baco Or for two consecutive nights against the big guns. But he needs help from his other teammates, especially against the tough team here in Pampanga. Clemente, in and out. Nobody boxing out JB Bayo. We now enter the final two minutes here. Nirmal gives it up to Aaron Heruta. Important offensive set here for Bacoor. Cuecote, this would be big. Hitting nothing but the top of the board. Shot clock is at six. It did not reset. Heruta will drive by against oh, Baltazar. Wow. He loses it. Garcia will take this all the way for two points. Talk about wasted opportunity there. Ball accidentally hitting that foot. Turnover turned into turnover points. That's turnover number 14 for the strikers. 
They were actually tied at 13 before that. Could have been a good opportunity for the strikers to trim down that lead to four points. But instead, the Giant Lanterns extend this to eight. 75 to 67. One minute and 31 na lang ang nalalabi dito sa ating laro. There you see on your screen sa uh, mga barangay captain ng Pampanga. Uh -huh. All here at the venue at the Laguna Sports Complex here in Santa Cruz for this game between the Giant Lanterns and the Bacoor City Strikers. Nermal from the outside. What a big shot. Garing dito kay Zan Nermal. Cuts this lead to just five. First and foremost, that was a good play by Coach Alex Angeles getting a quick three out of the timeout and what about the trust right given to John Nermal setting him up for what was a very crucial possession the strikers get a steal here a basket would definitely change the complexion of this game they want the ball back in Nermal's hands he'll take it from way out that's off to the right And Marquis telling him, penalty yung kalaban, but di ka lang drumay. Oh yeah, that's right. 50.9 seconds, two possession ball game. 75 to 70. Abi Palanya, Coach Mike Perez, Mishila Salaysay. On the call for you tonight, Garcia losing Heruta and Aaron not resisting the need to go for the reach right but you know if you look at the score Javi this is more or less a defensive game and should favor Bacoor because they are actually number one in limiting their opponents to at least 68 points only there's only what 75 that's pretty close far fetched from the 93 average of uh, offensive production by uh, Pampanga Garcia at the line he misses his first, only a 50% free throw shooter this season. It was MJ Garcia. That's his first miss tonight. Able to drain the second. Six point lead, 76 to 70. No timeout called by Coach Alex Angeles. They have one more ceasefire to burn. Quecote, the kick out. Peruta, flyby. Heruta sets for three. Too strong. That was a good line. Now they have to foul. I think that's got to be it. And there's, and there's the foul by Aguilos. Well, they had their chances. Right. That three by Nermal. A three by Heruta. And there you see the banner. Being held by the Pampanga fans, waving 19 and 1 to try and signal this impending victory para sa kanilang opponent. Well, 19 and 1 with these two guys leading him, Baltasar as well as Encho Serrano. Archie Concepcion had his shining moments, especially Binuya who got kicked out of the game because of two technical fouls. And boy, I can imagine the fun these guys are going to have on that long ride going back home. Well, you know, Coach Mike, uh, if you're really going to look at it from a numbers perspective, I'm looking at the numbers here of Edge Serrano and Balti Baltazar. 13 points for Balti, uh -huh. Serrano with 16. Right. These are below their averages. Right, exactly. And, you know, they were able to get stops, able to challenge him. Y you can't say Namala si Encho Serrano because he was getting his drives inside, just couldn't make it. Why? Because that defense was out there bothering him. 
And I think the factor here for the strikers, Coach, I don't know if you would agree, it's a 36% field goal shooting. Exactly. And this 13 out of 19 free throw story, para sa kanila, you know, if they made majority of that, mm -hmm. could have spelled the difference right now. Actually, if they made all, right. this would have been a tight game. And the, and the fast break point is really the one that's very telling. I mean, you know, Pampanga, when they get that ball, they're out there running. Uh, they don't want that defense to be set up because they do understand this is a highly defensive team. And so you don't want to put up that defense. Ironically, Bakoor struggled with that half-court defense set by Pampanga, which is exactly what happened to them in that loss to Nueva Ecija. Serrano missing both of his free throws and the Giant Lanterns just dribbling away the clock. Well, this certainly is it for the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. We're just waiting for the final score here. So the strikers will slide down to 16 and 4. A chance now for the Batanga City Embassy Chill to tie right, them up. Right. And you know, when you look at Paco Or, who are the, else the top teams that they're getting? They're getting Quezon, they're getting Zamboanga. So those two teams, you gotta be prepared for. While Pampanga, they got a long ways to go. Still a lot of powerhouse teams yeah. to face. Yeah, they're meeting Quezon, Zamboanga, Montinlupa and San Juan. Montinlupa and San Juan, their last two games. And so, you know, if it's going to be a matter of seeding, it still applies that both these teams to win as many games as you can. Yeah, and if you're the strikers, you definitely want to hold on to that number one spot yeah. in the Southern Division. Mm -hmm. Para, sigurado na, pag umabot kayo ng finals, you hold home court advantage right. throughout the playoffs. In Sapayon, you want to get the home court advantage because, you know, that sixth man is going to be that support that you'll need. Uh, they're a very different squad when right. they play on their home floor. They've only lost once Yeah. That's a strike gymnasium. Mm -hmm. And talking about the home court advantage, Pampanga certainly is also one of the best teams at home. Uh -huh. And that's it. The Papanga Giant Lanterns officially winning this over the Bacor City Strikers, 78 to 70. Strikers now losing their second straight uh -huh. after also losing to the defending champions, the Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguards, last Monday in Palayan City. And so Nueva Ecija now goes to 19 and one. Um, you know, Bacor, much as they lost those two games, it didn't feel like feel like a loss loss because you know there were wins in there that they saw our best player of the game is Justin Baltazar his 19th straight double double of the season yep, and he's just been very magical there were times that he got challenged but the important thing is he kept his temper checked he stayed in the game battled it all throughout earning him the best player of the game our best player, Justin Baltazar, is with Michelle Salaysay at courtside. Justin, congratulations on winning this game. Jump ball pa lang. Kayo na ang nagdikta ng laro hanggang sa huli. Ngayon, ano ba yung pinakamahirap pag veterano ang kalaban? Uh, yun, kailangan talaga namin mag-stick sa game plan namin kasi mga veterano yung mga kalaban namin. And then, sinunod lang namin kung anong mga game plan namin. Ayun, uh, makita yung pinakita namin ngayon. Consistency ang makikita sa performance ninyo. This is your 20th game sa season na to. 19 of those games, double-double ang performance mo. Paano? Uh, siguro, uh, pinagpapractisan ko lang lagi. And sa, uh, ginagawa lang namin yung game plan. And then, as a big man kasi, yun yung, yung trabaho ko. Pag nasa paint na, kailangan makuha ko yung rebound. Yun. Well, sa dami ng sumuporta at pumunta sa inyo dito sa Laguna, maaari mo na silang pasalamatan at syempre pag may pabatiin ka, go ahead. Uh, Unang-una, nagpapasalamat ako kay Lord sa binigay na panalo, sa mga kabalin na pumunta pa dito para suportahan kami. Maraming maraming salamat. And then sa family ko, Baltasar family, Serrano family, and sa mga boss namin, kay Boss, e, boss E.G. Gonzalez, kay Congressman Don Gonzalez, and sa pa family Baltasar, 
And sa Apalit, Lakandula, mga Tama Balakat. Yan. Maraming salamat. Congratulations once again, Justin Baltasar. At uh, Pampanga pa rin ang nangunguna sa North Division. Have you and Coach Mike? Thank you, Sheila. And that was it for Pampanga versus Bacoor, the top teams in the respective division. But it was the number one seed in the North winning against the number one seed in the South. Maraming salamat sa pagdala sa aming coverage for my partner, Coach Mike Perez, for our courtside reporter, Ms. Sheila Salaysay. This has been Happy Palanya. At ito ang Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League, ang liga ng bawat Pilipino. Kahit ano ang mangyari, sama-sama tayo.